Hi there my little Christmas elves, this is an episode of Tea and Tarot in which I'm going to sip tea and I'm going to talk about tarot because that's the tradition that I set up for myself when I started Tea and Tarot <laughs> which has been a very sporadic series, I hope you'll forgive me for that but I'm planning on bringing it back, I do really enjoy it so I'm definitely planning on on doing a few more episodes as the new year comes in. Since this one is Christmas themed I am going to be wearing my delectable Christmas jumper, what do you think? The Christmas the Christmas badassery in this video is, is clearly second to none, if I do say so myself. The tea for this episode is Heath and Heather's Apple and Cinnamon, which I purchased the other day from Holland and Barrett as a gift to myself. And it is so warm and fuzzy and gorgeous. It's like Christmas in a cup. It's freaking delicious. To warm and uplift naturally. That is so true. Apple, hibiscus, cinnamon, apple flavouring, elderberries and chicory root are the ingredients and it's absolutely exemplary. Thank you very much Heath and Heather. Christmas can be challenging. It can be really difficult and I think not enough people are prepared to be open and honest about that reality. I think in the last few years we have managed to blow the lid off it a little bit and start talking about some of the realities of Christmas and what it's like for people. But I think to a large extent a lot of people who want to be open about the difficult kind of complex feelings they have about Christmas are kind of silenced or mocked or made to feel like they're just bar humbugs and they need to shut up and get into the season and whatnot. So in this video, it's gonna be a safe space. <laughs> it's a safe space for you and me and everyone who um, struggles with Christmas in one way or another or who has worries about this Christmas in particular and kind of just wants a place where they can you know, be real about that without being silenced or without feeling like their emotions are somehow not valid. In this video I'm talking specifically about Christmas, I'm not talking about Yule, which is one of the eight festive markers featured on the one, the only, the incomparable Wheel of the Year. I'm not talking about Yule per se, I'm talking strictly about, you know, mainstream, westernised, giving of gifts, Santa Claus, Coca-Cola advert, Christmas. That's kind of where I'm coming from with this because I feel like that's mostly where the issues tend to be. So, so yeah, hopefully this is going to be useful to you and um, grab some tea yourself or some coffee or fuck it, a vodka if you're really worried about Christmas. Um, and let's, let's begin. Let's get into it. Okay, let's kick things off by talking first of all about family dynamics and family gatherings and meals with family and all that kind of thing. Because I know this is something that a lot of people dread around Christmas and it's something that does sometimes cause tension and it does cause upset and there is a lot of complexity there. There is a whole web of emotion built into family dynamics anyway, but then with Christmas and the expectations and the money that's been spent and everybody wants to make it a special time and you know, with all of that piled on top, it can be an absolute tinderbox. So I suppose that's where we should begin. Um, firstly, the devil. The devil is often a card which is associated with shadow work. It's associated with the dark, seedy underbelly of the psyche, with what is suppressed, with what is downplayed. And I think that's absolutely perfect for a discussion about family dynamics during the very high pressure Christmas period. Because, you know, a lot of the time we are expected to go and have a meal with family members that we rarely see, that we don't really know, that we have very different core personalities from and very different histories to, and that can cause tension. Um, we're often also expected to be around family members that we don't particularly like, who don't particularly enjoy us. So we're kind of putting ourselves into, you know, a situation with... Um, people to whom you're connected via a genetic accident. Let's just be completely real. I mean, it is a genetic accident. Quite often there are members of the family that you would not speak to or spend your spare time with, but for the fact that you are blood related. So, you know, that can cause a lot of tension as well. You've got different generations of the family that have very different ideas about what Christmas is and is not, what it should and what it should not be. The older generation perhaps has a more stringent, rigid, traditional, view of Christmas or perhaps a more religious view of Christmas and so maybe they want to go to church and they don't want to open the gifts until after the dinner and they want everything just so whereas the younger generations perhaps have a more free-flowing and spontaneous idea of what Christmas is all about maybe the younger generations are more commercial um, and more material they want to open the gifts first or maybe they just want to have more fun maybe they want to drink more booze <laughs> maybe they want to get pissed you know and the older generation don't like that or whatever so you know you have these these difficulties 
Now, the devil, I feel, is a representation of what is going on within your shadow side as an individual. Because you've got to remember when you have these gatherings and you have these meals with family, that you can't change any of their behaviours. You're not responsible for what other family members do. You're only responsible for how you choose to respond to what goes on and how you choose to conduct yourself. So I think the devil is probably just a, a pre-Christmas message for us as we move towards this really kind of emotion-led high expectations vibe of Christmas, that we need to look into ourselves at what our shadow issues are, that it's not our responsibility, nor is it our right to change or mess with other people's behaviours. You can't do that, so don't take that responsibility on. But what it is your responsibility to do is to check in with your shadow side, get to know what your triggers are, what really tends to wind you up, and what kinds of things make you behave in a not so great fashion over Christmas. You know, maybe you know that when you drink too much, your tongue gets a little loose and you start to say how you really feel. Or maybe you know that, you know, certain things just trigger you to, to behave badly and maybe you need to eliminate or reduce those things during Christmas. So there could be any number of examples there, but it's up to you to get right with your shadow stuff and make sure that you've got that in check rather than worrying about trying to manipulate other people's responses to the occasion or other people's behaviours. Another thing that tends to come up around the time of Christmas is consumerism and materialism, of course, because it is a very gift-centred culture around the time of Christmas. And people have very different ideas about what is an appropriate amount of gifts to give and what is an appropriate amount of um, kind of focus and attention to be placed on the materialism and consumerism and the gift giving and the lavish expense of you know of offering things to people and stuff like that. It can be very difficult to keep your own principles, your own ethics and your own beliefs in mind over the Christmas period. It's difficult not to succumb to that pressure either from mainstream society or from the family you're a part of or maybe from your friendship group. I chose the Knight of Swords for this particular theme because I really feel that the Knight of Swords is about knowing your beliefs, getting right with what your beliefs are and then you know, running with them, making sure that you don't lack the courage of your convictions. It can be incredibly difficult not to get sucked in to somebody else's idea of what Christmas should be about. It's really difficult not to succumb to the peer pressure that is often put upon us by mainstream society, by advertising companies, and sometimes also by our families and friendship groups if they have a very materialistic response to Christmas. Maybe you feel like you need to you know, be pulled along blindly and you feel like if you stand up for what you believe in and if you're not as materialistic, you're going to be ousted or you're going to be judged in some way. When you decide that Christmas for you is not about consumerism and it's not about materialism and it's not about getting yourself upset because you know other people have more money to spend on their children or their partner than you do or you feel that you're going to be judged if you don't arrive to the family gathering with the most lavish gifts. When you decide that that is bullshit and that you do not have to follow that trajectory, you actually give other people permission to feel the same way. And there are a lot of people out there over the time of Christmas, over that Christmas period, that feel the pressure and the expectation and they feel that they can't say no and they feel that they can't stand up for their own beliefs about how much materialism and consumerism should play a part in Christmas. So when you, you know, take the courage of your conviction and you live by your conviction, you give other people um, cause to do the same and you inspire other people. So try and think of it like that. Even if it's just about stepping away from overt giving of gifts, or even if it's just about refusing to let yourself feel bad because you don't have as much money as maybe a sibling or another family member, even if it's just that, even if it's just one solid action that you take to let yourself know that Christmas doesn't have to be all about consumerism and giving of gifts and stuff if you don't want it to be, when you do that, even just that one action gives other people permission to stop being so consumerist around the time of Christmas and to stop feeling like the money is what matters and the presents are what matters. And remember that if you're going to remove quite as much consumerism and quite as much materialism from your Christmas or the Christmas of your family, then don't forget to replace it with something. Replace it with creativity, replace it with art, replace it with helping those that are less fortunate. So replace it with, with charity, with social justice, with volunteering. Replace it with other stuff, replace it with spirituality, replace it with journaling, you know, replace it with self-care and self-love that comes along in other boxes aside from the box that has, you know, a dollar sign attached to it or a pound sign attached to it. You know, try and, and fill that consumerist void up with other things instead and show yourself and other people in turn how nurturing Christmas can be when it's not all about the gifts and the money. Mm. 
However, if you have £1.69 and you live near a Holland and Barrow, obviously Heath and Heather, cinnamon and apple tea is, is just the absolute essence of Christmas. Fuck Santa, it's all about this tea. The Queen of Pentacles can kind of remind us that everybody has very different ideas about money and the role that money ought to play in Christmas. Um, but the Queen of Pentacles, you know, she's not just the ruler of money and commerce, she's also the ruler of the five senses, the tangible realm, earth, health, you know, and other delights such as that. So I think the Queen of Pentacles can teach us that we don't just need to give things that cost money. And if you can't give things that cost money, if you are broke, flat broke, and you feel like that pressure is on to give gifts, you know, and spend money, then the Queen of Pentacles reminds you that you can give in countless other kinds of ways. And normally they will be the kinds of ways that people with a lot of money have kind of forgotten to factor in. You know, so somebody might have been bought lots of great gifts, but have they been asked if they want some help making the Christmas dinner? Have they been asked if they need help with the shopping? You know, how can you give in practical ways if you feel like you're really struggling to give in a financial way, in a way that involves buying things, then honey, don't sweat it because honestly this whole earth at the moment is on some kind of consumerist hangover. There's way too much of that as it is. How can you get involved and be of service and help and give gifts in other ways? Maybe you can give compliments, maybe you can give affirmations, maybe you can give help in a spiritual way, maybe you can give a tarot reading, maybe you can make somebody a banging cup of tea. You know, you are worthy so much more than your bank balance could ever, ever suggest, could ever symbolise. Your bank balance has nothing to do with who you are as a person. Your ability to buy somebody something has nothing to do with your ability to soothe people, heal people and remind people of their essential worth. So remember this Christmas that you are a spiritual being and giving and receiving of gifts has got to do with way more than just money. Money is the tip of the iceberg. Money isn't even where the good shit is. So just try and remember that, you know. I asked you guys on Facebook whether or not you had anything um, Christmas themed that you wanted me to include in this tea and tarot. And one thing that came up that a lot of people agreed with and said that they wanted to see was um, a card that could be drawn to help people who are going to be missing loved ones at Christmas, who are either not going to be around their family because they live very far away, or who have experienced bereavement and won't have their family around at Christmas. And obviously those feelings of missing someone that you love are really compatible pounded around the time of Christmas because it's so classically that time for uh, connections and unity and family and all that kind of thing and of course you may have many memories of prior Christmases when those loved ones were around so it is a really tough time and the first thing I think I would say is to remind yourself that it's okay it's okay not to be on top form it's okay to not feel Christmassy 100% you know it's okay to not want to wear a crimbo jumper if you're feeling a little bit low then let yourself let yourself feel a little bit low I'm not suggesting you drown in it and shroud yourself in it but be real about what's real and I know that I always say that but it can stand to be said again be real about what's real it's okay to admit that you're missing people that you feel lonely that you're not exactly where you want to be this Christmas and you're not with the people you want to be with I've chosen the tower because the tower is a, a symbol quite often of the way that we catastrophize and the way that we kind of decide what's going to be terrible and how it's all going to be so bad and how we're not going to be able to do anything to cope with it you know a lot of people who are not going to be around their loved ones at Christmas or who know that they're going to feel aggrieved at Christmas because of people who have died or who have moved on or who aren't around tend to say things like, I'm worried that I won't be able to cope, you know, um, I'm worried that it's just all going to get on top of me, I'm just going to get overwhelmed and it's all going to be too much. I think the Tower card asks you to get very real about what you mean when you say that you don't think you're going to be able to cope, you know? What does that mean? What does that look like for you? What's the worst case scenario? And what kinds of things do you think that you may experience? You know, do some projections in your mind, have a look in advance at what you're worried that the key triggers are going to be. What is it that you feel is going to be most painful for you and why? In doing that, you start to get a more conscious awareness of what your worries are, so you can focus on little rules, you know, little um, little flourishes that are going to help you to overcome those experiences. Maybe you feel that a certain kind of a certain time of day is going to be difficult for you, so you could take yourself off during that time of day and do something else. Maybe you're particularly worried about the meal because you know that person that's not there anymore is that person who was always so much fun and who told those funny jokes and, you know. So write it down. Write it all down. Be really honest and clear with yourself. What does it mean um, that you won't be able to cope? What would that look like for you? Do you think you're going to break down? Are you worried you're not going to be able to talk to people? 
Um, when you get clear about what you think is coming, then you can lay those strong foundations in place through creating these rules that are gonna help you to navigate the day. This is about strategizing and this is about navigating your way through the day and being on your own team, being on your own side. So rather than stuffing it all down, just say to yourself, say to yourself right now, I'm worried I'm not gonna be able to cope. I'm worried it's gonna feel terrible and then just write it all down, you know, what are the things that are really concerning you and which points in the day do you feel are going to cause real challenges for you and then start to put those foundations in place, decide upon positive nurturing things that you're going to do and thoughts that you're going to think that are going to allow you to ease into the day in a way that is not inauthentic, you know, it's not like you're slapping a smile on it, but at the same time you're allowing yourself to enjoy the day and you're allowing yourself to make sure you don't get shrouded in that, that feeling, that sadness uh, in relation to the absence of that person. Remember as well that catastrophizing is what happens when you tell yourself it's going to be so bad, it's going to be awful, I'm not going to be able to do anything to be happy and it's just going to be a shitty time, you know, and you look at those worst case scenarios and you build it up and you build it up in your mind and I think the tower can often be a representation of that. Actually often the tower is a representation not so much of what has happened but of what we are telling ourselves is going to happen. So it's time to be your own friend and it's time to realise where you are um, catastrophizing and putting a really negative spin on Christmas this year and just think about how you can take it back and how you can make it your own. This leads me nicely onto the next theme which is the whole idea of having Christmas your own way and coming up with your own ideas about what Christmas means. The fact is that a lot of people are coming up with very modern interpretations and very individual interpretations of Christmas and what it means for them. Um, it's, it's really important, I feel, at a certain age in your life to realise that Christmas can be what you want it to be. And sometimes you may need to compromise and go and spend Christmas with your family, but at other times you can choose to make it what you want it to be. I know that some people go on holiday um, for Christmas and just spend it with their partner. I know some people volunteer at Christmas with the homeless. I know that I've done that before. Um, I've also been to an illegal warehouse party on Christmas Day and I went to another one on New Year's Day. <laughs> I spent New Year with 2,500 people in a warehouse with a stack of speakers as big as this room. Um, I have volunteered, as I said, I have spent Christmas on my own, um, just walking around in the snow, journaling, listening to old vinyl. I've spent Christmas with my friends instead of my family. Um, I spent all Christmas Day once with my friends just getting drunk and watching Christmas movies. So I've tried to do Christmas in different ways. This year my partner and I are going to be staying in our home and we're going to have Christmas together, just the two of us, and we're going to make a gorgeous vegan roast. <laughs> I feel that it's important, especially for people who work and who get some time on holiday over Christmas, that actually have time off work, I feel it's important that people feel able to sometimes say, hey, I'm going to do Christmas my own way this year. You know, don't feel offended, it's not personal, but I really feel like I want to um, take a different direction with Christmas and do my own interpretation of Christmas. I think it's really important for you to understand that you're not responsible for making somebody else's Christmas, um, you know, everything that it possibly can be. I think it's really important to understand that when it comes to fully grown adults and family members particularly, you're not responsible for making sure that their Christmas is everything that it can be. They are responsible for their own Christmas joy and happiness and you're responsible for yours. And that's why I chose two kings, the King of Swords and the King of Wands. The King of Wands is representative of your, your right to dream up the Christmas that you want and to get creative about what Christmas really can mean for you and what it can be for you. And the King of Swords is this field marshal kind of archetype where you, you hone your creative visions, you harness them, but then you've got to carry them out, you've got to follow through with them and you've got to be prepared to communicate them to people and be assertive about what you want to do at Christmas and why you're going to be doing it. Be bold, just say, look, I want Christmas to be what I want it to be this year and you know, I feel like I want to do things in a different way, or I don't particularly want to attend this gathering, but I can certainly come later for the drinks, or, you know, I don't really feel like doing that, and it's not how I'm going to do Christmas this year, but I can definitely come around and bring the gifts in the morning, and we can have time then. Remember, Christmas isn't the only day in the holiday. You've got Boxing Day, you've got Christmas Eve, you've got New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. You know, you can still see people and have Christmas Day for yourself, and you can drink all the tea that you want. Just me, myself and I on the staircase drinking my tea. Oh. Just before I go, because I know I'm about to lose the light, it took me ages to get ready for this video. I had so much other stuff to do today. Um, but yeah, just before I lose the light, somebody else on Facebook suggested that I um, draw some cards 
to um, approach the sticky new year vibe where people are making resolutions and looking back over 2015 and maybe feeling upset about what didn't quite rise in the oven, um, feeling pain about the past or worrying about the future. I thought that was a really, really good focus area because there is a seedy underbelly to New Year that a lot of people don't talk about. Um, the same as at the beginning of this video, I talked about how people don't often want to discuss the not so nice side of Christmas. I feel like there's a not so nice side of New Year as well, and there's a not so nice side of Christmas, um, sorry, New Year's resolutions. So I think it's really good that that, that person brought that up. The Hierophant and the High Priestess. Because I really feel like the Hierophant is a lot about ritual and ceremony and spiritual recognition of what's been and what's coming and also of the holiness of the unfolding moment which is where we need to be most of the time i think the hierophant can tell us that when we look at our spiritual practice as a structure which is dynamically and ever-changingly involved in the process of releasing receiving and being where we are right now that can be so helpful and that is so helpful to me um, I feel that New Year is a time to celebrate, it's a time to look back on what didn't work and say fuck that shit, I'm gone, let's get on to the next thing and it's also a time to look at what did rise and say yeah good for me, that went well but essentially it is a time to be in the unfolding holy moment and that is what New Year can teach us more than anything else is just to be present. The High Priestess is about exploring the unconscious, exploring the depths of your psyche, exploring what New Year can mean beyond the surface veneer of New Year's resolutions and remember at this point there's a big discussion going on really um, all over the place about the validity of New Year's resolutions and whether or not they're really even necessary. People do all kinds of different things at New New year now instead of resolutions um, you know there's a lot of different kind of revolutions happening with regard to new year and what it can mean and how we can approach it you know we don't just need to look at what we want to get and what we didn't get during 2015 we can look at how we want to feel what we want to be how we want to help people um, we can just look at the lessons that we've learned and how we plan to harvest them and use them in the coming year um, New Year doesn't have to be about pressure, it doesn't have to be about expectation and it certainly shouldn't be about being disappointed in yourself and berating yourself. So if you feel like New Year's resolutions bring up a lot of that negative crap for you, then you can absolutely do something else instead. Maybe you could do a celebration of self ritual or a thank you letter that you write to 2015 for all of the lessons that it's offered to you. I hope this has been useful and thank you very much for checking in with Tea and Tarot and for dealing with my Christmas jumper for as long as you did. Ho, 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 ho. Very, very much love, blessed be.